So let's look at what blood flow looks like through circulation. We've talked about the factors that influence flow and that going through the entire circulation matters for thinking about pressure. It's also going to matter for other factors that are really relevant for exchange across tissues, um, so at the capillaries. So let's graph these various factors here. So vessel diameter, blood pressure, cross-sectional area, and velocity of blood flow across circulation. Your book has these same images and will be, it's a nice color coding with red and blue. I'm not gonna try to do that. So I'm just gonna do this in green. You already know what this will look like to graph vessel diameter over circulation. Um, I'm gonna kind of do an estimate it might not be perfect in terms of um, what sizes are. Do my best here. So we're going to start large. We're going to get really, really small. And then we're going to get larger again, almost as large as before. Right? We did that when we talked about blood vessels, these different types of blood vessels. We did this. This is another way to look at that same data. You should be able to match this up with that same that table that I drew and have both things make sense. They're telling you the same thing. You also may already know about pressure changes across circulation. You know it starts high um, and average blood pressure, again, I'll come back to this, this is the mean, it's gonna be about 100. Um, that's partway in between our systolic and diastolic. That's what I'll tell you for now. Um, it's, it's one value that's gonna represent blood pressure. Right. I think you're probably okay with talking about just pressure is going to decrease throughout circulation. So that's going to look like this. And it's going to continue to decrease throughout circulation. That drop might be a bit steep there. I didn't really mean to have like a super fast drop at capillaries. Um, it's not linear though. It's kind of a little bit of an S curve. It drops throughout circulation. Um, what happens to cross-sectional area? What do I mean by that? The total area that the blood is flowing through, that's a little different than, it's partly dependent on diameter, but it's also dependent on the number of tubes that you have, right? That's what area is going to be, both diameter and number of tubes. So we are going to have some baseline area and actually, it's going to go way up at the capillaries. Maybe not quite that high. It went above the graph. It, it's okay. Um, and then back down again. Why does it go way up? Because we have so many capillaries. So even though they're thin, they split. And there's so many of them. It's like a river splitting into a whole bunch of separate rivers. Um, that you're going to have a large area, even though they're very thin. And that kind of makes sense by thinking about what those capillaries look like, those capillary beds, they spread out quite a bit. Because of that cross-sectional area, what is velocity going to look like? Actually, sorry, let me go. Yeah, down here is velocity of blood flow. So what happens to velocity as you increase cross-sectional area? It's going to slow down. If you have more branches to branch into, the flow in each of those branches actually slows. So velocity of blood flow is going to start pretty high. That's close to the pump, right? We're pumping out. We have that pressure um, due to the pump of the heart is going to result in a high flow rate at that aorta and then the, the veins close to arteries close to the heart drop here and drop pretty darn low at the capillaries, pretty low velocity, but then we start to creep back up again. And that's largely because we're going from a high cross-sectional area back to low again. Um, so as we, those branches recombine, velocity is going to increase. So like here, we're going from one single tube, the aorta, let's say we split it, I'm not drawing accurate splits here, but I mean, there's, there's a lot more splits in this reality. Capillary beds, right, are crazy amounts. 
This is not how it looks biologically, but all these splits. And then these are going to start to join together again. And actually, I should have that in blue as they join back together. And those join back with other ones. And this is simplified, obviously. Eventually, we become the vena cava. Because of that, this is explaining our cross sectional area. This is also higher velocity, lower velocity, and then higher again. It doesn't ever reach the velocity it had at the heart because we're still pretty far away from that pump, right? Um, there are some pumping type mechanisms I'll talk about in the, the veins as well that contribute to this um, with getting the blood back to the heart, increasing that flow that also contribute to this increase right here. So these dynamics here are important for understanding, give you basis for understanding the pressures coming from the heart, what needs to happen at the capillaries. So low pressure at the capillaries um, compared to where we started and low velocity is gonna be important for movement of fluids across the capillaries. Um, and we'll come back to this, but I'll just say it now again. So what I just say, low pressure. And when I say low pressure, you still do need to have pressure at the capillaries. We'll come back to that, but you don't want it to be too high. Remember how thin those things are? It's a thin layer of endothelium. Those things will break and be damaged if your pressure is too high. So relatively low pressure and low velocity for diffu velocity. We need to have diffusion occur across those capillaries. So flow so flow from capillaries to tissues without damaging the capillaries. It is important to have pressure at the capillaries. We'll come back to the pressure difference that is here versus the tissues themselves and, and extracellular fluid, um, interstitial fluid is important for having capillary, for capillary action. Um, the other thing we'll come back to is the increase, the importance of how this increase in velocity at the veins occurs um, due to the mechanisms that bring the blood back to the heart despite having been so far away from the heart in terms of where we started. All right, learning check here. Which of the following decrease throughout circulation? 